I'm assuming by now that most of you have seen Jurassic World. It came out on Friday. A lot of people are seeing this movie. It's making a ton of money. I've already done my spoiler-free review, so if you want a spoiler-free review, that is on my channel right now. It's the last video I did, but this video is gonna be entirely about spoilers. I'm gonna talk in detail about some of the things I loved about the movie as well as some of the things I didn't like about the movie. Because in my review, I was sort of general about things by saying I didn't like certain subplots. And that's because I like to walk into a movie knowing as little as possible. And I try to preserve that experience for you guys because a lot of people just view a spoiler as he or she dies. But now I can finally just breathe and talk about these things in detail. So let's talk about the things first that I really loved about Jurassic World. For one, as I mentioned, Chris Pratt was awesome in this movie. And for some reason, the line of his that I laughed the most at was, hey, hey, don't give me any of that shit. I don't know why, it, just, it was hilarious. I don't know, it was a great line. His line delivery was perfect in the movie. He was a badass, him shooting down the Dimorphodons and everything. One of my favorite shots in the entire movie is when he's on his motorcycle, the raptors are next to him, and he sort of looks left and right for a second and smiles for a second like, holy shit, this is actually happening. This is awesome. And although I thought there was an over-reliance on CGI, I did really like the Indominus Rex. I thought she was crazy. She was frightening, the stuff she was able to pull off, the smart things she did, and of course, the camouflage. My mouth dropped in that moment. What disappointed me though was that they never really went on with that in the movie ever again. It was just that one really cool predator moment where it was like, oh shit, that thing can camouflage, and then it just never really happened again. And of course the bit where you realize that she's part raptor and the raptors now turn on the humans, all that stuff was great because you go into this movie, people were worried about the raptors being little baby toy things that hunt for humans, and they had some pretty badass moments themselves, and I was very satisfied with that. And as I said in my review, one of the most emotionally resonant connections I felt in the movie was actually between Chris Pratt and the Raptors. And that was handled really well, especially towards the end when he has to focus and sort of body language communicate to tell Blue to go after the Irex. It was great stuff, I loved it. And the inclusion of the Tyrannosaurus Rex at the end was beautiful. I adored it. It was one of my favorite parts of the entire movie, although the CGI wasn't quite perfect in my opinion. It didn't really look as good and actually as Jurassic Park or Lost World, I felt. The CGI wasn't as good as I wanted it to be for the T-Rex, but I loved how she was old and beaten and just ripped up because it actually is the T-Rex from the original Jurassic Park, although you wouldn't really know because they never say in the movie, which is kind of stupid, but the director has come out and said that, so that's cool. All in all, as you guys know, I had a lot of fun with this movie. I had a good time watching it. I was disappointed though that it wasn't really as deep as some of the other Jurassic Park films, particularly the first one. There wasn't much of a theme here. It was really just dinosaurs run from them. Similar to Jurassic Park 3. It's just that this movie does it a whole lot better. So let's get into some of the things I didn't like about this movie in spoilerific detail. In my original review, I mentioned there were too many subplots and I left it at that because I didn't want to let you guys know too many things. I mentioned that the kids sort of derailed the film a little bit. I liked their performances. I thought they worked really well in the movie. I like Ty Simpkins a lot. I actually thought he was really good in this movie and his older brother. But what was so unnecessary to me was the whole divorce subplot with his parents. It's mentioned in really one scene where they're on the monorail. He starts crying about the mail from different lawyers and they discover their parents are probably going to get a divorce. Now the reason I'm saying this doesn't really work for me is because it's never mentioned again. It's never really used as a way to flesh out these characters except for that one scene, which tells me that someone said, hey, we should probably flesh out the kids a little more. Okay, we'll do the one conversation on the monorail about them getting a divorce, and then we'll never talk about it again because it doesn't matter, right? So they tried to flesh out the kids by giving them a backstory, but they never again in the film allowed that to affect them. It was just one scene that felt almost like it was a reshoot just to give the kids a little more something to be thinking about. But by far, the biggest subplot that I thought was just really stupid in this movie that I didn't want to mention in my original review because I didn't know about it going in, so I wanted you guys to have that experience too, the military subplot. I love Vincent D'Onfrio. He is one of my favorite actors. He is so underrated. Men in Black, Full Metal Jacket, Daredevil. The guy is great, and he's good in this movie. But the fact that his character wants to weaponize raptors is so stupid. It's stupid for two reasons. For one, in a real world application, that's one of the worst ideas I've ever heard in my life. Can you imagine that? The good guys and the bad guys. The good guys have the raptors. The raptors go out, they attack the enemy. The good guys are getting wounded in the process by enemy gunfire. The raptors kill all the enemy. They turn around, they see the good guys. Some of them are bloodied. Some of them smell like meat. 
and the raptors just ignore that apparently and just go to the barracks and sleep with the good guy. Like, what does that even mean? Of course the raptors are gonna turn on the good guys and eat them. It's such a stupid idea. That's dumb reason number one. Dumb reason number two is because it honestly is a gigantic cliche. How many movies have we seen where someone invents something or has some form of scientific technology that's impressive where somebody from the military doesn't come in and wants to turn it into a weapon for uses of war? It's in like so many movies. It's such a gigantic cliche. Movies should have really focused down more just on our main characters, Bryce Dallas Howard and Chris Pratt, and allowed the movie to flow through them because one of my biggest issues with the film was that it wasn't really as intense or as suspenseful or frightening as it could have been because when characters are doing some of these things that are scary like Chris Pratt and the Raptors and the soldiers in the woods and the camouflage Irex and all that stuff is so good, it then cuts back to Vincent D'Onfrio kind of wandering around and talking to people about InGen, cuts back to the kids watching Jimmy Fallon making jokes and these shifting tones don't allow the entire film to feel as scary as it could be because just think about Jurassic Park. When the power goes out in Jurassic Park every single character in the film is dealing with that problem. And it feels so intense because of that. And the control room sequences in Jurassic Park were so suspenseful and featured really innovative camera work that just really made the scenes as good as they can be. The direction for the control room sequences in this film, Jurassic World, I felt were very flat. That's what I mentioned in my review. I said some of the directions a little flat. I was referring to the control room sequences because a lot of those sequences, and I watched the film twice now. I took my mom the other day. A lot of those sequences are just just cut to a close-up, cut to a close-up, cut to a close-up, cut to a close-up over and over again, and there isn't really that much interesting stuff going on there with the camera. And there's one attempt in this movie to really get a lot of comedy, that of taking Efron Khan's character, I may have said his name incorrect, I'm sorry, sir. He plays essentially Hammond in this movie, except he's not emotionally invested in the dinosaurs, he's just financially invested in them. They keep going for this joke that he's learning how to fly and getting his helicopter's license, and it just does not work. At one point he turns around, the camera pans in on him, and he's like, we don't need anyone else and he gets inside the helicopter, I was like, whoa, that wasn't funny at all. That was really cheesy. And I don't know if it was the direction or his acting, but when the helicopter crashes, it was like the worst acting I've seen in this entire film. This guy's dying, the helicopter is crashing, and this is what the shot looks like. That part was awful. Also, the fact that the kids were able to start that Jeep with 22-year-old fuel I don't know about that one. I'm not a car expert, but that seems a little far-fetched to me. And it's kind of funny because I realized the ending of this film has extreme similarities to the ending of the first Jurassic Park. Our heroes are cornered by raptors in the first JP film and are then saved by a T-Rex. At the end of Jurassic World, our heroes are cornered by raptors and an Indominus Rex and then saved by a T-Rex. It's kind of interesting. And then the Raptors save them too. So it was sort of like a twist on the first film, which I didn't really need. I, I wanted something a little more original and less like, hey, remember Jurassic Park was really good? Yeah, we think it's good too. Here's the part that's sort of like it. And you guys may think I'm complaining a lot, but I'm really not. I like the movie. I'm just talking completely in depth about why I didn't give the film an A plus and why it went down to a B for me. These are all the reasons. Some people complain that the girl dying was way, way, way too drawn out. I can understand why you'd say that, but a lot of people are like, well, you know, she didn't do anything. If this happened in real life, do you really think the dinosaurs are just gonna eat the really bad people? <laughs> to them, it's just meat. And I understand what most people are saying, that the scene was too drawn out, but whatever. But what I just, I just loved in this movie was the fight with the T-Rex and the I-Rex and the Raptors. All of that was just so much fun because when the Irex was about to kill the Tyrannosaurus, I was like, you're kidding me. You're going to pull a JP3. You're going to make this thing kill the T-Rex that quick and you're going to piss me off. And then the Raptor saved him. It was awesome. T-Rex came in there and then the Mosasaurus just came out and it was great. I loved it. I was just like, yes, that's what I need. That's awesome. And last but not least, one thing I really did love about the movie and by far one of the scenes that got me the most was when Chris Pratt held the one dinosaur head as it died and, and he just kind of pet the head and everything and Bryce Dallas Howard was crying because that was an animatronic and it worked so well we needed more animatronics in this movie. All in all though guys, I had a good time with Jurassic World. I'm gonna buy the Blu-ray. I've already seen it twice. I'm looking forward to seeing it again. It is not as good as the first two in my opinion, but it is way better than three. So guys, let me know what you thought of Jurassic World below. Those are all my spoilerific details about the film. And if you like this, you can click right here and get stuck manized.